Hello, I'm Executive Vice President and Provost Tom Poon, and this is LMU On Location. Today, I am joined by Presidential Fellow Janet Yang, Clinical Professor in Film and Television Production in LMU School of Film and Television. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, Tom. It's great to be here. Uh, and congratulations on your recent appointment as President of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And if I'm not mistaken, you're the first uh, member of the API community to be appointed as president of the that Academy? That is true. That is true. Can you tell me how being uh, Asian American shaped your professional life? My initial inspiration to get into the film business actually occurred after I came back from living in China. Mm. And I had seen a number of films there that I loved. And, and growing up uh, in a very white community, on the East Coast, it never occurred to me that it could actually work in the film business. I loved movies. I watched a lot of movies. I watched a lot of television. But it just all seemed like it was happening so far away. Hollywood was like a distant planet. After I decided to go live in China following college graduation, I was so inspired by seeing films and television shows that obviously featured people that looked like me. And I felt like my eyes were being opened up to what was possible for us as, as a community. My first real job was to distribute films from China, and then I was hired by the studios to sell American films to China because it was just at that moment in the 80s when things were starting to open up and US-China relations were normalized. At any rate, I was doing, I was flying back and forth to China, and then one day I got a call from Steven Spielberg's office saying that he was interested in making a movie in China and would I be able to help? So just one thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was on the streets of Shanghai, standing next to Stephen with 5,000 extras for the making of Empire of the Sun. Oh, I remember that, yes. And that's when I also realized that what I really wanted to do when I grew up was to produce. But you actually worked on a film that uh, was really instrumental in my upbringing, and that was, of course, The Joy Luck Club. Right? Because I remember such a dearth of representation of Asians in, in Hollywood films. And there was another film that really resonated with me, which was um, Better Luck Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That was a Justin Lin film. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I finally got to see my people being represented in Hollywood. And um, so thank you for making that film. What is it like being in this position? Well, you're pioneering representation in Hollywood. Back in the day when I first started producing, I was just gravitating towards the projects that I cared about and that resonated with me. I wasn't thinking, oh, what is this going to do in terms of community building or what is the impact? I just felt like if I really like this, then maybe other people would like it, you know? So in the Joy Luck Club, it, was, it felt like kind of a fluke. It was a, a book that was introduced to me before it was published by a publisher when I was actually in New York with Kathy Kennedy, who was Steven Spielberg's producer. And I I knew that I had to try and find things that were a little more mainstream, because bef again, before I was just working in China. And I read this book and I couldn't believe how much it resonated with me because it was genuinely about the Chinese American experience. And I had never read anything else like it that was so close to, m to my, my personal journey. And it almost felt frightening because I wasn't used to my private life at home being so exposed, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I was really drawn to it, and I met Amy, and I said I would do anything I could to help her get this movie made. One thing led to another, and we got that made. It didn't seem like it would be a, a one that would be a last for ages, as mm -hmm. it seems to have. People still talk about it. It was just, a, an, uh, we just thought, let's just get this made and get this made right. And 
and then let's see what hap what will happen. So it is interesting how that one has has uh, is now assigned at schools and therapists recommended to their clients. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Better Luck Tomorrow came out by Justin Lin, and there've been a couple of films like that. Chan Wayne Wang is another director who you know. There, it would be like a drop in the bucket. One, one thing would come out, and then there was nothing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really changed in the last several years is that we now know there is momentum and there's a flow yes. of of wonderful movies and TV shows, and therefore an, a, a hugely growing um, talent pool of directors, of actors, of writers, and. I now feel, finally feel very secure that we're not gonna go backwards. We're not gonna go back to a time where there are n there's no Asian American representation. Um, I feel that there are too many people who are going to ensure that this is uh, a forward moving uh, movement. Yeah, I agree, and I, I'm so grateful that you pioneered the way for that, so thank you. Can you share a movie or a TV series that has uh, uh, that you've seen that you just can't stop thinking about, whether it's good or bad? Oh, you know the one that I've seen recently that I think is so incredible. It was uh, on Apple TV. Is Pachinko, oh. and it was based on a novel. It's set across four generations of a family, and it takes place between Korea and Japanese, and it's actually done in three languages. Mm. So you have English, Japanese, and Korean with mm. you know two subtitles. And I just thought it was beautifully shot, and the casting was impeccable, and it did have those sweeping scenes. Oh, that's great. Have you seen um, everything, everything, Everywhere, All everything, at Once? Everything, oh Everywhere, All at Once. That is such a phenomenon of a movie. Michelle is a friend. I've seen her quite a bit, mm. actually, recently, both at some festivals and at a dinner recently. And mm -hmm. and I'm so happy for her, in particular. Um, that movie is beloved by so many people. Mm -hmm. And it is a showcase for incredible acting talent because they get to play so many different roles in one movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers, You know, especially those students who are taking your class? the world is ready for a lot more different kinds of voices. Mm -hmm. uh, when I arrived in Hollywood, everybody was looking for a certain kind of movie, and it usually was a white male hero, and there were certain tropes that were very common, and everybody gravitated toward the kind of blockbuster movies or the kinds of things. I enjoyed my my partnership with Oliver Stone because he kind of broke the mold a little bit, and mm -hmm. he, he made films that were based on true stories or historical stories. But for the most part, Hollywood seemed to be mostly interested in, in, a, in a certain kind of movie. And I think the, the uh, business model of streamers has changed things a lot because now they care about eyeballs anywhere in the world. They care about more authentic stories coming from anywhere. And I think that's really changed a lot. So now the challenge, I think, is to be very distinctive. There's so much out there mm -hmm. that it is harder to be distinctive. You know, back in the day, you knew which few movies were opening up each weekend and you'd go see those. I think the, the challenge, though, is that there is so much and there are so many ways to get in there. There are very few barriers to entry. People now are becoming famous on TikTok. Mm and they're becoming famous on YouTube. I, I asked my class in general, what, what are the biggest stressors for you? And one of them said, it's the knowledge that everybody has access to all information at all times. Mm. And that can be very overwhelming. There's, you know, when I was growing up, things were funneled. We didn't have quite as many choices. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it's very challenging for, for young adults now to have to pick and choose where they want to find themselves and, and their place in the world. Well, well, that's very interesting because something you said piqued my interest earlier, which is uh, you said that you focused on films that resonated with you, that really meant something. And I kept thinking, wow, is that even possible these days? It's a good question. It's always the balance. A, a film, to me, is a, is a mix of art and commerce. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it leans more in one direction, sometimes in the other. But if you don't feel passion for something, it's almost impossible to make something good. Mm. Yeah, I think you, the, the world is still so uncertain. The path to getting something made, we, we talk about all the time, every film made or every show made is a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's a minor miracle. You had to have so many things aligned and fall into place at the same time for it to happen. And 
you, you, it's especially in television. There's like committees of people that are evaluating your project. So getting the right budget, the cast, the the locations, everything is is really difficult. So th the path is always uncertain. But if you don't have the stamina and the passion to drive you forward, so you can just keep going down, the, you know, without any certainty, mm -hmm. um, without any guarantees that something's going to happen. There's heartbreaks all the time, mm -hmm. and you just have to recalibrate and, and pivot and say, okay, that person dropped out or the financing dropped out or this happened or that happened, and you're just constantly adjusting. I do think that in the end, and this is something I tell my students, there are good life lessons mm -hmm. about how to stay, on the one hand, very focused, but also remain flexible. Mm -hmm. You have to be very flexible. You can't get too stuck on one plan because that plan may just fall apart and then you don't want to just give up altogether. Mm -hmm. Then you have to kind of pick yourself up and then say, okay, this is how we're going to approach it now. Mm -hmm. Do you think that passion can be faked or does it show in the film? I don't think it can be faked. I mm -hmm. think I sense it in yeah. people. I don't think it can be faked. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, and I think that's why, to me, that's the first key ingredient. If you were looking for a job that was more secure, this is not the place to look for <laughs> it. As somebody once said, producing is a terrible job, mm -hmm. but it's a great life mm -hmm. because you're always on some adventure. Mm. And I think some people can handle uncertainty better and, and finding the gift in whatever is happening, you know. And at the same time, being you have to be very tenacious, too. So it's a very... Uh, very uh, contradictory kind of set of of uh, skill sets, I mm -hmm. think, that you need um, to to pursue this line of work. <laughs> yeah, and you know, this is the first time I've heard making films described as as miracles, right? Uh, it's a miracle. Yeah. Well, as you know, at LMU, we believe in miracles. Yes. Right? We talk all the time about praying to the movie gods. <laughs> we talk all the time, well, I guess this is what the universe wants yeah. or what God wants or not. You you, you don't, you feel the one, uh, on the one hand that you're not at all in control, mm -hmm. but that you have a, pe a part in it. You're channeling something. You're a piece of a, of a bigger picture. And it's just kind of aligning with, with other forces. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So as president of the Academy, speaking of control, what do you have control over? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've lost control over my time. <laughs> That's great. There are just so many meetings. I, I, um, it's, it's a both externally facing job and an internally facing one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have some sure. familiarity with that, what that's like. So I oversee eight different committees. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, an awards committee, a museum committee, a membership committee, a governance committee, a finance committee, mm -hmm. uh, a, a education outreach committee, and a historical preservation committee. So there's a lot of just really getting, and I, I think it's going to get a little easier. I, I felt there was so much, I was very aware of of certain aspects of the job because I already chaired the membership committee this mm, last year right. and then the membership and governance committee in the past year, but but it's really getting handled on so many pieces. Uh, so that's the internal part and, you know, working with the incredible staff. But the external part is for instance, we just had an all-member meeting where Bill Kramer, the CEO, and I spoke to literally thousands of people, and it was videotaped. And then we were going to a lot of festivals. I'm leaving next week for New York and London film festivals. I have to reschedule one of my classes, unfortunately, because of it. Um, we were at Telluride in Toronto. So, and you know, there's press and there's mm -hmm. public engagement. So there's a lot of that. You know, the messaging and being really aware of communications and. And it is a it is a a, a a little bit of a power being perceived, but I feel like I was fairly well uh, prepped. I think I, I have a level of uh, maturity now that I wouldn't have had maybe even ten years ago mm -hmm. to take it all in and, and maintain as a balanced life. Have you chosen your next Oscar host? My next Oscar host? Yeah. No. And if we had, I don't think I could announce it here first. Ah, right, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know I'm available. <laughs> oh, well, let me put your name in the hat. Thanks, I didn't thanks. realize. I didn't realize. Thank you for that suggestion. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I'd be terrified. <laughs> so you mentioned your class. Can you tell us about your class? Yes. Well, I've been teaching two different kinds of classes, one in the fall and one in the spring. Mm -hmm. 
And I really love teaching. I mean, I, I've gotten very close to some of the students. They, they write me sometimes and, and uh, keep me posted on what's happening. So in the fall, I teach uh, a, a master of producing class, mm -hmm. master of creative producing. Mm -hmm. And it's really an introduction to all things related to creative producing. So that means not production, not the nuts and bolts of mm -hmm. what this crew is doing and budgeting and scheduling, but it's all the things that come before and all the things that come after a production. So it's so much about how, first of all, how to identify a good project. Where does it come from? And then how to sell it, how to have a proper log line, a synopsis and character descriptions. And a big part of the industry is driven now by pitching. So especially during the pandemic, everything became a pitch, a, a Zoom pitch as opposed to a meeting, mm. and that's continued. So executives at TV buyers or studios or whatever, they're, they're just lining up pitches all day long, mm. one, 9, 10, 11, 12, sometimes now just half an hour you get. Mm. So you have to convince them in that short period of time that you have a project worth, worth buying. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so it's a lot about materials. A lot of visual materials are involved, mm -hmm. a, a deck, and often a, a tone wheel or some, some sort of visuals. So that's all the things that lead up to getting your project green lit. Mm. And then it's everything that happens afterwards. What if you do get it made? And then suddenly you're approached by agents or, or sometimes you need agents to get the right talent to be in it and dealing with the industry at large. And, you know, what what happy, what finance agreements, legal agreements, um, distribution agreements, and also what are the jobs out there for you where you can continue learning? Because uh, a lot of people decide they want to be a director and that's all they want to do, or they want to be a writer and that's all they want to do. We as producers are kind of jack of all trades, mm -hmm. and we know a little bit about everything, but there's so many amazing jobs in the industry you could be a casting assistant. You could work as a development assistant in a big production company. You could be, you could be working in HR. You could be working at an agency or management. You know, there's so many, and I think it's really healthy for people to know what all the options are if you're not trying to sell yourself as a director or as a writer, because those are very specific paths. But all the other jobs that are available to people interested in producing. Mm -hmm. And then the spring class is the capstone class for the graduating graduate students. Mm -hmm. So it's their last semester and their third year, and it's all about their projects and what they have to, you know, again, they're gonna be going and pitching their projects and hopefully learning about, again, how to uh, attract more projects. Well, I can already tell that our students are so fortunate to have you teaching them in the classroom just from the way you've answered the questions. And, you know, I've also seen your teaching evals. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> but seriously, uh, we are so fortunate to have you here at LMU. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for imparting your wisdom on our students. Um, and thank you for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for allowing me to teach your students. I've enjoyed the experience very, very much. Thanks, Janet. Thank you.